memory dims, what would you sit down and tell them about their mother? Mainly how much she loved them. She did. Those kids were everything to her. You know, she, they, they were her world. That's all for now. I'm Lester Holt. Thanks for joining us. NBC4 News at 11 starts with breaking news. It is my hope that our officer survives these injuries as they were very serious stab wounds. An officer stabbed in Santa Monica, a struggle for survival between a police officer and a suspect armed with a knife. We are told that officer is still in the hospital and seriously wounded. Tonight, police say he was first approached around 5 p.m. NBC4's Amber Frias joins us live now from Santa Monica Police Headquarters right where this attack happened. Amber. Jonathan Cappy, police tell us the officer was standing right outside the police station, helping another person file a police report when he was approached by this man who then pulled out a gun and proceeded to attack him. Now, police have not said what, if anything, was said between the two before the attack, but they did tell us that the officer had reportedly asked the man to wait while he finished helping the other person, and that's when the man pulled out a large knife and attacked him. The officer tried to move away and pulled out his gun, but the man followed him around the corner of the building. At that point, the officer opened fire, killing his attacker. The officer was then rushed to a local emergency room by other officers where he is being treated for serious injuries. Police Chief Ramon Batista says the department is very shaken by the incident. I can't tell you enough how disappointed I am to see that this attack unprovoked occurred on our streets. In Santa Monica, we pride so ourselves in trying to keep our city safe. Unfortunately, we've had a very serious, serious events that have occurred on our cities since this summer. Chief Batista also said this is the third officer attacked in recent weeks. Now, as for the officer that was attacked today, the only information he would share is that the officer is 35 years old. He's been with the department for about 10 years and that he is recovering in the hospital from serious injuries. Now, as for the attacker, all we know is that he was a man in his 30s. Live in Santa Monica, Amber Frias, NBC4 News. Amber, thank you. We are going to continue staying on top of this breaking news, including updates on the officer's condition. To follow along with our instant updates right to your phone, you can download our NBC4 LA app and turn on your notifications. We're learning more tonight about a man who was shot and killed while attending his son's football game in Bellflower. It happened in the St. John Bosco High School parking lot around 830 this morning. Witnesses say two people pulled up next to the victim's car, opened fire and then drove off. Sheriff's deputy Deputies say the man's child was not in the car at the time of the shooting and the passenger was not injured. So far, no arrests have been made. And the police right away, you know, you got to get to protect the family. They were all over the place, you know, and they were thinking about stopping the, the game. But I'm glad they did because that also helped out. The Sheriff's Department says the victim's car was reported stolen out of Linwood. A detailed description of the shooter has not been released. Almost one year later, the images from that day are still just as affecting. The surprise attack from Hamas terrorists raiding a music festival in towns across Israel. In many ways, October 7th has come to define our world since. And since that day, we have witnessed irreversible violence. Tens of thousands of people killed in Israel and Gaza. At least 97 hostages are still held captive by Hamas, although around a third are believed to be dead. The toll has charged Israelis, Palestinians, and everyday Americans into a historic level of political unrest. Today, thousands of protesters took to streets in major cities across the world, including D.C., London, Paris, and here at home. You're looking at the view from our News Chopper 4 over downtown L.A. this afternoon, where hundreds gathered in Pershing Square, protesting the ongoing war, calling for a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas, and demanding that the U.S. remove itself from the bloodshed.
We really need to wake up, you know, because I believe in us as people. I don't think that anyone has it within them to want this to happen. A lot of our allocation and resources could be going here, home. We need more funding for our education. We've